Hi, welcome to today's video. Um, I had a YouTube follower reach out to me and uh, ask me, uh, well, they actually have a problem with their uh, Aladdin lamp that uh, it's not burning evenly and if they don't have a consistent round burn uh, around the, uh, the wick and the flame spreader, when the gallery's on, if you don't have a consistent, nice blue burn, what'll happen is uh, uh, if you get one side that's higher than the other, then you'll never be able to get the lamp to get to peak uh, power uh, or efficiency because what'll happen is uh, it'll overburn on one side and soot up the, uh, the mantle and literally destroy the mantle. Uh, this lamp here, it's a new style Max Bright 500. This one's been kind of funny for me. I have three or four of these. I use them. This one's kind of kind of funny, so I'm keeping an eye on it. Um, but uh, anyway, I'd like to show you the anatomy of uh, Aladdin burner and what to look for uh, before you put a wick in it. Uh, this one appears to be fine. The wick is a little burnt, a little uneven, so I'm going to trim this one. I'm going to show you how to do that pretty easy. Uh, and then um, we'll go from there. So this is a Model B burner. Uh, very similar to the new style ones. Um, as you can see on the Model B, I don't know if you can see that, the, well, the, this is the anatomy, that's the burner basket. This is the inner wick tube that the flame spreader sits in. The wick travels up and down this inner wick tube. Then we have the outer wick tube. So the outer wick tube is pretty symmetrical except it has one cutout on one area that's wider than the other. So it only goes in one way. Uh, that's actually good and can be bad in some instances. So there's two little punch marks in the burner uh, basket itself. So that way when you assemble this, you're going to assemble it wide. You're going to put it in and you're going to turn it. It only goes in one way. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to check to make sure you actually have a, a, a consistent gap between the uh, inner wick tube and the outer wick tube. And the tool, special tool that I use is the good old fashioned Q-tip. So I just basically cut the end off one and it this this you know these cardboard toothpick or sorry uh, q-tips they're they're about the same thickness as a uh, as a wick so what I kind of do is I assemble it the way it should be and then what I do is I put this thing in and then I, I travel it around I, I look for a tight spot like if I can't if I get to a spot and I can't drag it through and the other side's kind of loose I know that that this um, inner wick tube it would be you know a little bent to one side and that can happen over the years uh, and it's a pretty simple process to straighten it you just get yourself a, a 7 8 dowel or you can turn something down like this one here was turned down or this is just a piece from the hardware store you can go get like you know four feet for five bucks and just cut off a piece and that fits in there kind of nice and what that does that gives you some leverage to to basically straightness so it's consistent so what you'd want to do is you want to get a felty or like a sharp uh, a sharpie I should say and when you drag it around this one here appears to be tight on this side here looser on that side so if I just stick the dowel in give it a little bit of a pull it doesn't take a whole lot and then feel it and it's it's better it's consistently kind of pulling it's not pulling at all really perfect so that's actually perfectly straight so at that point I would throw in a brand new wick uh, burn the wick of course so what you do is you uh, basically put the wick in advance the wick up so it's out dip it into some kerosene um, and then I usually put the flame spreader back in and then pull the wick down a little bit and light it and let it burn until it burns out and it should probably take uh, probably about five minutes to burn out. You usually have to do this outside because it produces quite a bit of black soot but once it's charred then at that point you can use a wick cleaner to uh, give it the right contour. So there's you know these guys have made a hundred different wick cleaners and they all do the same job and literally they're all interchangeable. Um, it just gives it a nice a nice uh, a nice contour so you get a nice burn so what I'm going to do is on this Max Bright 500 I'm going to trim the wick because this lamp did overburn on me I'm not sure why uh, it's done it a couple of times so uh, I don't want to pull it all apart and change the wick and check everything like I did this what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim the wick and 
I don't know if you can kind of see this. I'm going to try to get closer, but it's definitely uneven. Um, so if you if you take a look at it, it's just it's not it's not a nice consistent wick. It's close, but it's not perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to advance it so the the low point is flush and the high points are now up a little high and just use a just use a blade. You can use a safety blade. I just use like this box cutter thing here and just give it a little bit of a just try to get this a little bit more level. Sometimes you get these little hairs that kind of pop up and uh, the threads from the uh, I just burn them down. And what I'm going to try to do here is just try to get this a little bit more. I think I got it. It wasn't really that bad, but it was enough for it to burn uneven. So at that point, I'm going to advance it. And I know some people say you're supposed to turn in a certain direction, um, say clockwise or something. But uh, I find that that should be a little bit better. There's still a little bit of a a little bit of a hair on there I want to get rid of. Just give it a little cut. That should be better now. So at this point, I can put this back on. So when I light this, um, when I put the gallery back on, uh, we're looking for a nice clean burn. That's the other way you can also help correct a burner. Um, is the gallery placement so this is not the right gallery for this obviously it's for this one here so the gallery can go on any di any given way it's it is it can go on three different ways so one thing you do when you do light a lamp if the flame is high on one side and the other take the gallery off or well the chimney and gallery probably better if i show you on this lamp here oh, there we are this guy here um you know pull it off and then reposition it into, into a new position and see if it changes. You know, there's obviously three positions. So there's, you know, machining tolerances between all these and over the years. Um, but the whole idea is that you want to get a nice, consistent blue flame. No spikes. No, if you have a flame that's going up one side that's really high, that's no good. You can't, you can't burn. You have to stop flame spikes. Um, mo models to watch out for are Model C's. Uh, they're supposedly notorious. I have dozens of them. I've never fired one. Uh, I just stick to B's, uh, 23's, or the Max by 500's. I find that some of the 23's out there are some of the best burning lamps I own uh, and produce crazy amounts of light. Um, but um, And then some of the 23's are garbage. So typically I only burn really 23s now and max by 500s because the wicks are more common and I can get them a lot a lot cheaper because I can buy them in bulk uh, mantles are all the same of course so um, at, at this point um, I really only burn 23s and 500s and uh, and that's it so once in a while I do have a couple of model B's that I'll fire that I'll fire up once in a while but uh, so definitely change the gallery position now on the newer ones in the 23s, the outer wick, outer wick tube can go in three different ways. So if you find that you have a, a funny burn, you definitely want to reposition this on a 23 uh, or a Max Bright 500. Um, when you light the burner, you need to let it warm up. All these, I don't care even this new one, it warms up quick. No, no, they got to warm them up. The trick to warming them up is you advance it just enough so the very, very top is glowing. Um, the top of the um, mantle um, and very lightly and then let it warm up and after about 10 minutes you'll see that it'll start moving its way down and after about 15 minutes uh, you can adjust it. Uh, some are more finicky and you have to keep an eye on them. If you've got a trouble lamp like this one here, I don't put a shade on it. I keep an eye on it and walk over to it once in a while but after a while you can start getting consistent burns on certain lamps and I have about five up at the cottage and two, at, two or three at the house here that I burn consistently. Uh, and only one out of these like nine lamps is a problem lamp and it's pretty much this guy here. So I'm going to keep playing with this guy some more. Um, you can also adjust the height of this as well too. That's more of an advanced tuning. 
Uh, that will change um, at where it's going to basically heat up in the mantle, but I wouldn't really worry about that if you're over burning. Um, so that's really that's really it. That's all you really have to worry about. It's just getting a nice blue burn, run it on low, uh, and then go from there. Sometimes you get a burner that's no good. So if you bought a Model 23 and it's like a Hong Kong model, I mean, they built those from 69 to 2000 and whatever, uh, 2014 or whatever. So, you know, they they were built for such a long period over different factories. Not all the parts really do interchange correctly. Uh, all Model Bs all interchange correctly. Of course, the new ones all interchange. Most of them interchange correctly. Uh, but then sometimes you can, you know, piece lamps together and make some hybrids. So you got to be careful. Uh, I see a lot of uh, when I buy a lamp, it's got the totally wrong wick in it. <laughs> so there's, it's got an old style wick and a new style uh, uh, burner. So the the old ones, the old center draft wicks were much taller. So if you get any of the uh, any of the steel lamps or the tin lamps from you know the older with the uh, with the uh, I'm gonna pull one out here for example. So any of the center draft that go up the the middle. Those wicks are actually longer, and I've seen the wrong wick in, in, a, in, a, in the wrong lamp. It's too short, it's too tall, they cut it, it's just, it just doesn't work. So just make sure you got the right wick. Uh, it's pretty simple, it's Model B, and then there's, after that, um, you know, the Model 23 and all, or a newer, all the same. So uh, just make sure you got the right wick, uh, char the wick correctly. This one is now not so bad, so... I can start playing with this one and get this tuned up and uh, keep an eye on it on the bench uh, for a while, let it burn and get it adjusted right. And then every, you know, I burn them for three to four hours and when I blow them out, I, um, I blow them out, put a cap on the top so they don't keep convecting uh, on the very top of the, uh, of the uh, chimney so it doesn't keep convecting. Um, and then when I go to light it the next time, of course, I pull it off. And then I would definitely clean the wick um, with the wick cleaner just to make sure there's no excessive carbon on it and uh, light it up and uh, warm it up and burn it. So that's really it. I hope this helps the uh, person that was uh, having a problem with their lamp. Um, you know, once in a while I get one and it just, it kind of, you know, if it's a Model 23, I mean, they're so plentiful out there. You can get them pretty cheap at the flea markets and Kijiji and eBay or wherever so if I get a bad one I just put it aside and don't worry about it because I have dozens more of, of better ones that are known good units but uh, anyway hope this helps and have a great day